In this video, we're going to learn about prediction of the n object density. We have a posterior density, a transition density, and then we have the Chapman Kolmogorov prediction, which takes the transition density, the posterior, and marginalizes over the previous state. We will first have a look at how the transition density is modeled in n object tracking, and then we will see what the predicted density is. Modeling the motion for n objects means that we need to describe how the states evolve from time k minus one to time k. So we need a transition density for all the n objects. And we make a simplifying assumption in n object tracking, which is that the time evolution of the objects is independent. The n object transition density is a product of a transition density pi for each individual object. And as shown here, typically the same transition density is used for all objects. Let's take an example where we have a Gaussian state transition density for single objects. So the transition density pi is a Gaussian density with some motion function f and process noise covariance q. The transition density for all n objects is then a product of this Gaussian density for each object. And we should point out here that even though we are using the same motion model f and q for all objects, it does not mean that the estimated motion parameters, such as speed, heading, acceleration, turn rate, etc., it does not mean that those parameters are the same for all objects. Now, consider an independent posterior at time k minus 1. The predicted density, assuming independent motion, is given by the Chapman Kolmogorov prediction. And if we insert the transition density and the posterior into the integral, we can rewrite this as a product of a Chapman Kolmogorov prediction for each individual object. In other words, we predict each of the objects independently of the other objects, and the predicted density is an independent density. Now, let's consider instead that we have a mixture posterior then we can show that the predicted density is a mixture density, where we predict each mixture component independently of all the other mixture components. So we have that each hypothesis can be predicted independently of all other hypotheses, and the hypothesis probabilities, or weights, remain the same. If we have a posterior that is a Gaussian mixture, and a transition density with a linear Gaussian motion model, then the predicted density has predicted weights equal to the posterior weights, and the predicted means and variances are given by the Kalman filter prediction. We can visualize the predicted density using a linear Gaussian example, where we have scalar object states. To make the visualization simple, we have just two objects, and the motion model for each object is a random walk with variance 0.25. The posterior is a Gaussian mixture with four mixture components, and given that we have a random walk motion model, the predicted density then also has four mixture components. The predicted mixture weights are the same as the posterior weights, the means are the same as the posterior means, and for the variances, we add the process noise variance to the posterior variance. So for the visualizations, we will look at both the n object density as well as the marginal densities for each of the two objects. First, we have the n object densities, the posterior on the left and the predicted on the right. And this visualization clearly shows that the uncertainty of the two object states has increased in the prediction, which is due to the process noise. We can also look at the marginal densities. And again, the posterior is on the left and the prediction is on the right. Here. We plotted the Gaussian mixture as a solid line, and the individual Gaussian components are plotted as dashed lines. And again, we can see how the prediction has introduced more uncertainty for each object. Let's also have a look at an example where we have four objects, and the object state consists of 2D position and 2D velocity. Here, we have a constant velocity transition density with a constant velocity motion model, F, and process noise covariance q. The posterior is Gaussian, and the predicted density is also Gaussian, with means and covariances given by the Kalman filter prediction. Because the object state has higher dimension, 
it's quite difficult to visualize the joint density for the multiple objects. And because of this, we're going to instead visualize the marginal densities. Here we have plotted the four objects. The position is given by the different markers. The ellipses show the uncertainty of the position. In other words, the position covariance. And the straight lines show the velocity vectors. For this example, the predicted marginal densities look like this. Each object has moved according to a constant velocity motion model, so it has moved along the velocity vector, and due to the process noise, the uncertainty of the states has increased, which can be seen here as larger position covariances. To summarize the N object prediction, we have that the objects move independently of one another. When we have N object hypotheses, they can be predicted independently and the hypothesis weights are unaffected by this prediction.